Hi, welcome to the Pursuit of Truth. Sorry for filming with the light behind me. Naughty me. Um, I was watching on ITV, um, it's an Australian backed film, Itaka, Itaka, Itaka is it? I wonder what it stands for, it must mean something, maybe it means truth or freedom. Um, it's about uh, Julian Assange. Um, I know I've talked about him before on the Pursuit of Truth. It was interesting when I was re recollecting how years back when this all started, how my impression of him was uh, um, was very much a, a negative one. Maybe I should move this. Out. Yeah, it was very much a negative one because uh, originally they talked. You know, I had the, uh, the idea of like him him fleeing from justice, as it were, um, and I suppose because of the the crime, the sexual crimes that they laid against him. Um, but now knowing all this other stuff that I know after the, over the years, I, can, I wonder like why, why did I have this impression of him as being a, a so-called like bad man as it were, when all he was doing was um, telling the truth. Um, because I assume that the 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 information that he put on WikiLeaks or some of it was video, so it, you know you can't really unless you're going to say it was CGI'd or doctored or something. Um, no one has said that the data that he gave out was inaccurate or untruthful. They may have said they worried about, you know, the, you know, the, the, the people that he may have disclosed, but apparently there was none of that and there was no, uh, no deaths that was linked to his information being linked on WikiLeaks. So basically he's there because he, in a nutshell, released secrets that the government of the United States and maybe coalition, the UK and etc. didn't want to be released. Not that they question, they didn't question his veracity, they're questioning the fact it was espionage that that's what he's done. So he's being put in prison and wants, they wanted to fly him to the estates to follow uh, for extradition to stand trial for telling the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> that, that, that's. I mean, how ludicrous is that? And, and uh, I see, because it showed his, his father uh, and his, his wife and his two his kids and how difficult that must be for them to live like that. You know, that you have to tell them that your father's in prison and we're all fighting for his justice, for his freedom, because he told the truth. And I suppose, uh, and like they were saying, like he's the first journalist, as it were, to be... Uh, charged with espionage because you know the Constitution of America, the freedom of speech, and etc., and around the world. I mean, it makes you feel like this seemed like very um, you know, retrospectively a Nazi or Stasi kind of operation, or what how now the Western media or Western countries will try to show how China and Russia are, or the Middle East, and say, Well, look at how they are, look at what they're doing to journalists. And you know their freedom of speech, uh, freedom of speech, and arresting them, and this, that, and the other. And yet here's a Western country, the you know the White Hats, as it were, in cinema terms, um, who want to charge a journalist with releasing this data, publishing it through the Guardian and other newspapers, the Spiegel, and uh, I'm not sure which was American one it was. Um, not actually, and the people who did these crimes, well, none of those have, have, have had to face. I mean. Uh, Tony Blair and George W. Bush have never had to go to The Hague or anywhere to face, you know, the fact that they lied to the people about the weapons of mass destruction that were never found, that, you know, that the, this war was nothing about uh, freedom. The fact of, you know, uh, you know regime change was against international law by removing Saddam and the Taliban. Um, and yet not, none of that is, is there. It's the man... Who, who found the dirty secrets and said, look, look, this is what they did. And I think you should know this because I, you know, I don't, I'm against this war and this is why I'm against this war. This is what's really happening. This is what your uh, sons and daughters who are being sent out to do these things are doing for your government. You've been brainwashed into thinking that this is patriotic and this is, you know, you know, just and, and, and valia. Whereas really it's killing other human beings. And committing war crimes. And yet because I've told you that. Or Julian Assange has told you that. 
or Edward Snowden or whoever, and then suddenly it's like, whoa, you can't do that. We're going to put you in prison for telling the truth. But it's amazing that for lay people, as it were, us, you, me, listening, me, recording, other people, you know, all, all these people that are backing Julia Assange, uh, who, you know, Nobel Prize winners, uh, world leaders and etc., UN officials, they can all say this same stuff. You know, that this is, you know, all he did was tell the truth. He didn't make it up. Yeah. OK, based on the system that we live in, we're not meant to steal secrets. But the fact is, whistleblowing, part of, you know, that if someone's doing something wrong, you know, they're not obeying the laws of the, of the land that they've set, then there's a justification for that to be brought because that's a crime. So therefore, based on that, whistleblowing is allowed. So, but he's telling the truth. He's telling you how bad the countries that you're following have done. And then successive leaders, you know, uh, President Obama, uh, uh, Donald Trump, President Biden, um, are still wanting to prosecute him for telling the truth. It's gone now anyway. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't know what kind of kind of uh prison you know what the the, the real <clears throat> well it's not really about him is it because this is you know putting him in prison is going to make no difference because he's already done it we already know how bad the us and the coalition were we know what they did we know about the war crimes and the people that should have been charged have got off with it the generals the most of the soldiers the world leaders who you know you, you know who backed the the war in iraq and afghanistan which you know included um Russia, Ukraine, you know, most of Europe, America, I suspect even Australia, most of the countries around the world backed this illegal war that the UN Kofi Annan said was an illegal war, but they backed it and they said, yes, yeah, the right thing to do, despite all knowing the whole truth of it now, you know, seeing these videos that the WikiLeaks released of people just shooting people indiscriminately, you know, reminding you of like the Vietnam, you know, platoon or type thing, still happening. And it still, you know, happens always in war. This always is going to happen. That's why we shouldn't be fighting against each other because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. But the fact that all these people are still sticking to this story and wanting to... But well, the real reason isn't to do with really Julian Assange. It's to do with the future, like they said in this Itaka program. It's to make you wary of... If you come across something, that you shouldn't release it. Because if you do release it, if you tell the truth, if you dare to tell the truth, you stand up. And that's the most hardest thing, to stand up and say, I know something, because it, all the attention is going to be on you and all the attacks going to be on you, all the personal attacks, all the ridicule, everything, you know, facing extradition, you know, facing prison term and all the things that Julian Assange has had to do for telling the truth. Because no one denies it's not truthful, is it? Well, that's going to make think, people think twice, isn't it? Obviously. No one's going to want to be the next Ed, uh, Julian Assange, are they? And that's where it harkens back to that idea of the Stasi and, and Nazism. And yeah, OK, it's not in the grand scale of the same things, but in this particular case, uh, and there may be, another, uh, there may be other uh, cases where this is happening, not so publicised. But that's what it's telling you. And that's why you, you wonder why in the world that we live in, why it's very difficult for people to ever stand up. You know, we all know that things are going wrong all the time. This system does not work. We all must know that. I'm not the only one telling you that. We all know it in different areas, in where you work, in you know, the NHS, in mental health care, in education, in you know, all, all the different places that you could possibly look. If you worked in every single job, you'd find these things that you should be whistleblowing. But you won't because you've seen this. You've seen what's happened to Julius Assange. And that's why we're never going to change as a society, as, as human beings, because we're too scared to stand up. Because when you do stand up over anything, no matter how small it is, you're always the one who ends up getting attacked. You're always the one that, you know, oh, you know, you're the bad one. You're telling the truth. You're trying to solve something and you're the bad one. And that's why people, most people, do not complain, do not you know, say, oh, I saw this happen or, you know, I want to be a witness or want to, you know, actually change the world that we live in or the system we live in. If it, it, in reality, if you actually ask them if there was no way that they would ever get prosecuted, if they could be completely anonymous and they could change the world, the system that we live in. Most people, I'm sure, would say, yes, 
Because look at the poverty, look at the starvation, look at the waste of time that we're all doing with numerous jobs to make other people rich and competition, all pride and uh, possession and borders and, you know, the dehumanisation of humanity that this system involves. I'm sure most people would say, yeah, I'd stand up for that. But in the way that we are, when you have a spotlight on you and when everything is, you know, and when what can happen to Julius Assange could happen to you, no wonder no one stands up for nothing and nothing ever gets changed. And the perpetual you know, status quo continues on and on and on and generation after generation moan about it secretly in their own houses or to each other. And yet nothing ever gets changed and the suffering continues for humanity. So this is an important case because it... it amplifies or it, it shows us demonstrates the problem with humanity in the system that we live within how we've been wired how we think how we deal with things and why we don't change and why you know this is the reason why humanity is still you know not progressed to the way it should have done you know and therefore shackled us as i often say if you want to hear more about that there's plenty of these videos that are going to come up at the end of this or, of course, you could just go to the playlist, The Pursuit of Truth, and find anything. Or just search for John Doerr poems, The Pursuit of Truth, or whatever you want to look for. Because uh, I, I talk about this a lot. Anyway, take care, take it easy, God bless, and peace. Here are the videos, and subscribe now if you want to do it.